Yo, I'm Matt Forio, and welcome to this episode of Chisel This, where we're going to analyze Alexander the Great's terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day with Ivan. For the duration of this analysis, I'm going to have my old friend Jacob guest hosting to bring you all the beef about these absolutely ancient people. Hey, chiselers, or whatever Mateo likes to call you guys, I don't know. Um, I'm Harry Potter 2875, and I'm here to talk about the things that I do best. History and music. Thanks, Jacob. Back to me for a minute. I've been waiting for epic rap battles of history to bring back the epic with a punch, and they absolutely crushed it here. I've been waiting for another battle like Jobs vs. Gates, or the Philosophers, or the Russians rap battle. I consider this battle a Scrooge vs. Trump without having to abide to the story of Scrooge. We start with two, and it slowly evolves into a whole round of opponents trying to test their worth against the one. Where this battle got it right, is new storytelling. They created a new story to tell. There was no preconceived story. They're unconnected to each other, so ERB has the obligation to connect them with their own unique story. Now, they didn't prioritize any specific pace or progressive rhythm in this battle over the actual storytelling. If a transition was too complicated to be fleshed out in just one or two lines, they developed an appropriate sequence for it, with each of those sequences building tension and suspense for the next. I remember the first time I was watching it. I wasn't bobbing my head up and down and making stupid faces and dancing like a moron trying to pass it off as content. No, no, I, I was thinking. Thinking about something in particular. I noticed the time on the video, which is roughly over four minutes long. When Alexander finished his first verse, I was surprised to see Ivan come back. So this battle starts off and instantaneously with the first note of the instrumental, you get the mood. This is going to be intense. Slower tempo allows for more real estate within each bar to either drag out certain words or to do a motor mouth. We see this divine looking silk skin warrior versus this, well, street rat. We immediately get the range between these two characters and see what it means to be a great versus a terrible. So Ivan the Terrible was first Tsar of all Russia, not just a little bit of Russia, all Russia. When he rose to power, he was like, he was all right at first. And he just sort of started getting very paranoid and ruthless. Granted, he was powerful, but he was a really awful dude. He killed his own son eventually. What a, what a life. I guess now's a good time to say that Nice Peter absolutely slaughtered this character. Absolute consistency with creating a character and staying with it. Nikolai came to the Kremlin's arrival. Mm, what a beautiful queen to beat me in the battle. Diabolical eyes hitting all the sweet spots of the corneas. This massive furry costume hiding most of his body and shielding his insecurities. Shrouded behind numerous ferrets taped to his face. Donning religious garb, but not afraid to sin. Decorated with age-old jewelry and even older fingernails. Just an absolutely great personification of an absolutely terrible person. He starts his first verse with some great, tight, compact lyricism. Demonstrating one of two instances in this battle, where the sound of the word Ivan is recreated using the sounds of different words put next to each other. Sounds like one of the songs in my upcoming album. Well, after the rats of Nim stop growling, we get this juvenile fella controlling his opposition. Hey fella, swell this. On to the greats, who are, as you would expect, significantly better people than Ivan the Terrible. Not necessarily more successful, but certainly better morals, kinder spirits. Alexander the Great, well, first off, he was tutored by Aristotle, so you know that kid is gonna be smart. You know he's gonna grow up to be a genius in one way or another. He conquered so many places. Big empire. This kid was successful. What I like about this verse is that you can tell that the actor, Zach Sherwin, had a huge role in crafting it. It's important for a guest star to utilize their talents as to optimize the collaborative experience. Not only does he fit comfortably in the role, but this style keeps this myriad of rappers fresh. It's good to see Zach back. I find that when characters don't have explicitly notable traits to reproduce, you get half of the vision of that character and half of the person playing it. The blend between traditional Zack and Macedonian war hero Alexander compensates for the rapping and historical aspects respectively. 
Notice how this battle doubles as a history lesson and a rap battle, not just one or the other. The parts of it that are history lessons are used as fodder for future disses. For example, Alexander repurposes his long list of conquered territory as a DLC expansion pack for a video game. I had the Balkans, Persia, Syria, Iraq, and Pakistan in my expansion pack. Then using that categorical rhetoric to mock how Ivan died just playing a regular old board game. While well, you died in the middle of a game of chess. Before wrapping up his verse, Alexander does what Frederick the Great will later do, foreshadows his own death within history and within the context of the rap battle. So go fix me a drink so I can stay refreshed! He only died at age 32, after having accomplished all of that. Zack hits many sweet spots towards the end of his verse with his rhyme scheme. The glory I got, the war that I fought. Be forward, I'll take up this sword that I brought. The glory and not. And I'll sword to the top. Sword in the helmet that I wore in a porcelain pot. And they be praying for the torture to stop. But I would leave them contorted and they be screaming and roaring until their vocal cords were torn up and shot. Instead of just referencing the Gordian Knot, he cushions it with perfect rhymes for that item, using it as a platform to mold this entire ending rhyme scheme on. Now notice as his rap gets more intense and convoluted, Ivan stops listening. Alexander keeps rambling on without the foresight to examine his enemy's actions. He is exuberant in youth, rushing through the winds of this battle with energy and confidence, only to miss the opposition's deviation behind the scenes. This whole time, Ivan is concocting a potion to poison Alexander with. And then he does what he does best. You can actually see him conceive the idea within the verse. And then we get jarring jump cuts of him acting quite suspicious. If you kind of just stare and go at the flow, you'll get a little lost as well, not realizing what's been happening and what will happen. Instead of this battle taking the royale route, we get abruptly interrupted with one word and a pause after this long motor mouth sequence by the person we've already seen before. <laughs> It seems as though Ivan is conceding here, giving Alexander a false state of security. I don't stand a chance against your skill. He pulls an evil witch on this Snow White. A drink to your victory. Yes, I will. Leading up to the most diabolical scenes ever conceived in epic rap battles of history. Ooh, what's wrong? I feel a bit queasy. Ah, you been poison. I can't describe the way he says some of these lines as Ivan. They are pure. Evil. Ugh, I'm terrible. They never break character, a and if they do change moods, it's on purpose. This performance is completely devoid of any gripe I've ever had in the past. I will go as far as to say that this role is Nice Peter's greatest role in ERB history. Listen to how evil and morally barren this person sounds. My stomach's riddled with holes! Ugh, I'm terrible. Only a truly black-hearted person could make a pun of his own name in what seems to be a complete acknowledgement and pride of his own sins. That's the worst kind of evil, malicious intent. Not only does this man show malicious intent, but he does so using trickery and deceit, luring in his enemies with a form of hospitality as if he's some kind of predator. He revels in the glory of his malevolence and finds pure joy in what we find pure evil. In real life, that's a bad guy. In this rap battle, that's a spectacular performance. Then the battle gets a nice 180. There's no great who could defeat this Russian. We've seen wickedness, we've seen courage, and we've seen savagery. And now we get a comedic relief of some sorts. What about a flute busting Prussian? The whisper with the inconsistent voice cracks is such a severe swerve from what we're expecting at this point, and I love it. We get this sequence where Frederick the Great is performing a flute solo, and some people are chanting his nickname, Old Fritz. Hey, Fritz. It's like, where did this come from? And at this point, I'm saying, how many greats are they gonna include? Who in the blue hell is Frederick the Great? In addition to being a badass soldier, he had very good just sort of policies. He sought to sort of embody the idea of a, it's called a philosopher king. I would say he did pretty well. He was a pretty, pretty radical dude, that Frederick. He then performs an aesthetically pleasing verse, decorated with nice flow, wordplay, and a revival of the same story elements from Alexander's verse. I'd like to point out one line that I find particularly genius. Oblique attack, doctor said exactly straight! This is a reference to something called the Oblique Order, something that Frederick utilized. Not only that, but it was highly rumored that Frederick was a homosexual. So, in a bit of humility, Frederick not only pokes at his own sexual preference, but makes a double meaning with a quite literal translation of the sentence. Oblique ain't straight. 
Well, that's the definition of oblique. It's something that's crooked or not straight. When a line makes clear sense on the surface, but proves a double meaning just by reading it literally, that displays a lot of intricate backwards thinking and very careful word selection on behalf of the writing staff. Before Fred finishes his verse, he foreshadows his literal death and his figurative death within the rap battle using a very pleasant rhyme scheme. Hey, oh, bring me my chair. I'm wearing from there and you a new derriere from here to Red Square. Now that we know the basic format of the battle, we expect Ivan to come back as a repeat defender. He does. Oh, what a humiliating defeat! It's here where you notice that Ivan is really lit differently than the other characters. His face is pale with fear-mongering shadows, almost similar to a campfire story session where the reader holds a flashlight beneath his or her face. His face is so blatantly insincere to the audience, but his opponent is totally oblivious. This creates layers upon layers of dramatic irony in the viewer's mind. It's thrilling to a very high degree. Now here we expect to see Fred get beheaded. Why don't you drop dead, Fred? But history proves he died of natural causes sitting in a chair. This creates another comedic break where the villain is caught in a situation alone. No, one, no one's watching him now. When he is alone, he doesn't have to put on a ruse. My expectations were a lot higher. He lets his natural character run like a wild banshee, acting like a child on Christmas now that he's murdered two greats. It's another great day and another great victory. The faces are still incredible at this point. He is really happy about this. So he puts on this face of sarcastic leisure as he strolls through this rigmarole of a murder spree. His voice is still nailing all of these tiny inflections that are indicative of a pure portrayal of character. But at least I saved the rubles on the gunup wire. These sounds don't sound forced. They're coming from a raw place in his chest and it's painting such a vivid picture with our ears. He's frolicking about until he genuinely gets interrupted by Pompey the Great. Because no great can beat me. What about me? And to add another brief moment of comedic relief, he gets beheaded. This is a perfect role for Mike Batet to play, since he's not a rapper, and this story point actually gives perfect excuse for an ERB rapper not to rap and also not have to act. He makes a face, they CGI cut his head off, he's in a rap battle. Pompey the Great was sort of one of the main ancient Roman leaders. He was a member of the first triumvirate along with Julius Caesar and Marcus Licinius Crassus. Whereas like Caesar was really powerful and successful, Crassus was just a rich Like Pompey was kind of the weak link. He was a good leader, but he was not really up there. He didn't do a lot in comparison to the other two. And he was eventually assassinated and had his head cut off. So yeah, <laughs> ERB has clearly recognized that the guy is not that important, or we would have gotten a verse to himself. Macedonians, Prussians, and Romans. Here comes Catherine, the independent woman who don't need no man to trick her into killing herself. She's going to be the one to thwart Ivan's hat trick for the day. I do like that they have this girl singing her verses more than rapping, which again adds to the diversity of the rappers. It's what the actor Megan is famous for, and like I said, put them in their comfort zones to utilize their true talent. They put people in the background dancing behind her, I assume, due to her limited amount of movement, as to not keep the environment stale. After her first verse, Ivan tries to trick her, Except this gift, your highness. but she's not having it. That whole story is a pile of shit. She's too good to succumb to that horse manure. Using more clever and compact lyricism, they combine a whole bunch of meanings in like three words at the end of her verse. That's something I like to do. She proves her worth in a verbal checkmate. Checkmate! And this long tale of greats and terribles comes to a close. Catherine, as ruler, maintained a lot of healthy relations with like Prussia, France, Austria. She was also super sexed up, like she had a husband. It was rumored that her husband wasn't the father of any of her kids. Like wow. This was just such a great battle. Something I found interesting in this battle is the instrumental range. For the first time in a while, the instrumental helped move the story. There's so many moving parts that come in and out. That bending electric guitar is so exhilarating at those moments. Oh, what a humiliating defeat! I know when I am beat, so of course, take a seat! And it's just another ingredient in this whirlwind of excitement that's going on with Ivan's character. Overall, I think this battle is the best one we've seen in a long time, thanks to a lot of people. I almost can't believe that they came up with this one 
whilst working on all the other ones in the same wave. All I can say is congratulations on this half, and I can't wait to see the next one. Well, now what for Chisel This? Well, I plan on releasing more instructional episodes of Chisel This on how to write creatively and rap, as well as butchering and rewriting some raps that I think ruin pop music. While ERB is on break, I'll be releasing my very first album. It's called Fire Rap Version, and it's a bunch of philosophical stories told using Pokemon as a metaphor. Metaphorio and it has a bunch of great guests on it. We're almost done producing it, so it'll be up probably within the next two weeks that I post this video, and the album will release with a very special upload, so please stay tuned. I'm Matt Forio, and that's all Forio today. The reason I'm so uh, desperate to talk about the music for Alexander versus Ivan has nothing to do with the beat at all. Um, it has to do with the fact that they used singing. From a musical perspective, which is what I certainly have, it was done very interestingly. Because obviously you don't hear just sing the same notes in unison a bunch of times. Because normally when you do backup vocals, you're just essentially sort of doing what you did before, but except you're just doing another take so it sounds like two of you and it just sounds better. But in this case, she was sort of harmonizing with herself. I say sort of, because normally when you harmonize, like it would be two, three, four, five, however many notes, however many different notes that sort of make up a chord and they sort of move together to create a really pretty sounding thing. And that's not to say that Catherine the Great's verse wasn't pretty sounding, but it wasn't the sort of conventional harmonies that you would expect. The first thing I was reminded of um, I don't know if you guys have heard the new Ariana Grande song, Dangerous Woman. I'm really not into Ariana Grande, but I really love that song because it's more rock, which is what I like. And especially during the choruses towards the end of the song, uh, Ariana does this thing where she'll sing various melodies that all fit within the chords and key of the song, but she's not exactly concerned with having them harmonize with each other. So I thought it was very cool that they applied that to a character like Catherine the Great. I was getting pretty obsessed with it a little, and I was thinking, I love those harmonies. I'm gonna make a cover of at least that verse, if not the whole battle. Macedonians, Prussians, and Romans, those on were the opponents. It takes a Russian to take down a Russian, I'm cat, I'm a cat, you're a rodent. How are you the head of our state when the city all have is such a crazy one? You're such shit shit going through your brain, then you suck a spike through your own son. Well, you're unbalanced like I am balanced, the European powers of the wars I wage. I brought the Russian Empire, out the olden days, to ride into the golden age. I'm a boss bitch, then you just can't meddle with this whole battle. A beautiful queen to beat me in the battle. Accept this gift, your highness, I hear you. Enjoy the battle! Bad horse story is a pile of shit. The would do keep chomping at the bit. But you're never gonna get it yet. Couldn't spin in my chamber, this was Russian roulette. Pick it up where Peter the Great left off. Bring sexy back to House Romanov. So don't call me queen, I'm far more great. My breast is sorry, bitch. Checkmate!